It was totally incorrect, but magically, out of nowhere, we got fresh water and a little bit of coffee. Um, so now you know what it's like to have an expectation about having a need met, and then not having the need met. Well, this is how a couple of billion people feel every day when they go about their ordinary lives. So maybe that was a good reminder to us all on this, uh, this day. It's about sustainable opportunities. So, there we go. So let me just briefly introduce the uh, new panel here. On my right here we have uh, Mika Vinska, uh, Senior Project Manager at FinPro. And he's got 15 years experience in various, I like the way you say, various business development assignments and projects, which sounds slightly mysterious, but I think this belies the fact that you've got a lot of experience in business development. It's not easy starting a business up, and it's not easy ensuring that it's still there after a few years. And I think this is a wonderful context to talk about that in. And Mika might tell you a little bit more about himself in a minute. And then we have Hena Huso, um, who is an MSc candidate uh, from the School of Business. Uh, her major is in management and her minor is in creative sustainability. So again, we have one of these students that's chosen to mix across the different schools. Welcome, Hena. And then we have uh, over on her left, Anna Meyer Fontel, uh, who's the Director of Research and Development at Biolan OI, um, leading a dream team, apparently. You can tell us more about your dream team in a minute, Anna Meyer, but the focus of Biolan is to reduce the harm done by people to nature. Earlier on, we had this idea that people and nature should be in harmony, and uh, Biolan does that by developing solutions and products for ecological sanitation, kitchen waste composting, an organic garden, gardening. So welcome, Anna Meyer. And last but not least, we have Ewa Erki Mantunemi, uh, who's the Innovation Director of the World Vision Finland, and also uh, COO at the World Vision Finland. He's responsible for leading and developing information and communication, human resources and finance, and control functions as well to build economic development with Finnish companies. Through the WE Economy, Note the poster, the We Economy Start Innovation Program, and I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that later, but welcome again, you are Eriki. So, another great panel, and uh, we've been tasked with talking about transforming existing business models. So, there's an implicit assumption in that, that existing business models need transforming, and I'm sure we'll get on to that. Um, one thing that's running through my mind, in the previous panels we talked about competencies and awareness and, uh, and this transformation of the people who were doing the transforming and, and all these issues. Very briefly, do you want to pick up on any of those themes? Um, if we're going from existing business models into something new, then what about awareness? What about understanding of the business conditions, for instance? Uh, what about understanding how you work with people and key competences? Anybody want to kick off on that before we get onto deep subjects like the we 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 economy competences? Let's let's start with you, Mika, since you're not volunteering. I'm going to pick one. <laughs> okay. So uh, you know, 15 years of business startup, business development. What awareness do you need? What competences do you need? Uh, well, uh, to start up the. My experience is uh, most of the quite tra traditional business development. So, but more or less, the competencies are, are all, always there. In, in many many cases, uh, let's say during my business development career or various organizations, uh, the competencies are a key key element. And many, many cases, uh, for example, when I'm working with uh, small and medium-sized companies, uh, the importance of, of networking and, and doing things together with uh, others is their session. You, you, what you seem to be saying then is that people often don't realize all the competencies they've actually got. They need somebody outside. We go back to a point I think that uh, Tim raised earlier that, that you can see something within, but you need sometimes people from without to... And in many, many cases, yes, you are correct. Uh, and the competencies, uh, uh, some cases, not luckily all, all, all the time, 
uh, people go goes with a let's say not closed eyes but quite narrow uh, perspective yeah. because it's it's the question of the business so you have to focus but at the same time you might uh, need some let's say the different point of view to support and, and find out the real competencies okay and I think this idea too came up in the previous sessions about uh, looking at another perspective so when we're looking at this rather large job you have I think uh, to coordinate information communication human resources finance where, where do you start I mean you, you start from a policy I mean how do you make the first step to me as somebody involved in design education design practice and I look at the things you're probably juggling on an everyday basis and I think which direction do I step out in I start from the economy <laughs> I mean, I mean that's that's close to my heart. Yeah. So uh, yeah, okay. Of course, you you need to juggle with the with the different different elements. Um, I think for the for the successful companies and the businesses, you need a, a mix of. You need to be ready to change the competencies and mix the people in your organization in order to be be competitive and in order to be ready for the transfor transformative steps uh -huh. uh, within your businesses and that is that is very important and uh, it's it's uh, the case is quite easily so that the companies are following the path that they have set for themselves and continuing on a traditional way forward and I think this economy is is, is one of the example where we can and where we try to change the attitudes and, and break the barri barriers between the different players and can you mix, give the, a, mix the competencies. A brief uh, description of the we, we, we economy, what, what, what's different about it, how do you see it having benefits or advantages and what would be my motivation as a business person? Yeah, okay, okay. this was a, quite a good lead to this topic, wasn't, wasn't it? Okay, so basically, economy is is uh, is a combination of of uh, NGO work, uh, NGO competencies from the development aid organization and uh, child sponsorship organization like uh, World Vision. I'm representing World Vision here. We are doing this in a cooperation with Aalto University, as well as with FinPro. So basically, we are bringing in the development aid competencies into this, uh, this uh, cooperation mm -hmm. and our knowledge about the local poor community grassroots uh, daily lives uh, networks that we have been working with uh, decades in those mm -hmm. target areas in, in low income communities. And FinPro is bringing their competencies from their perspective uh, from, the, from the business side and other universities bringing the academic uh, knowledge about uh, BOB markets, let's put it that way, based on the pyramid markets. Okay. Maybe for, this for million people living under, under, or purchasing power under five, five euros, euros a day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe this is the time to just explain to the audience who don't know FinPro just a little bit more about your activities. Uh, the, yes, those who know, don't know FinPro, FinPro uh, dates back to 1990 when it was uh, established as an export organization. Since then it has gone through many transform transformation and now it's the part of the ministerial or organization as, as an association uh, supporting Finnish companies' growth and internationalization and especially uh, in the competence area for the business development. And, and, and that sense and focus we are also uh, with, uh, with uh, this Weekonomy program. I mean, there's a curious thing to me, if um, I've run businesses in the past, you know, if you're saying to me my average customer is living on $5 a day and they're, they're your new audience, you know, I'd be thinking, yes, but where do they get the extra cash from? How do they justify spending one euro a day on what I might offer, you know, basically what's in it for me, which would be a selfish attitude, I know, but how do you start persuading them to, I mean, if you're going to have uh, an idea that this is 
<clears throat> a new market for you and it can transform your business, but that's the raw statistic that these are cash poor people in every sense of the word. Where do you start making a proposition? Yes, of course. Yes. Do you want a mic? <laughs> Please, thank you. Uh, I think you start from the real need. You okay. start not providing what your company wants, but you start from the local mm -hmm. and from the people's real needs. That's when they are going to want to fulfill that need that is genuinely theirs, and then you start your business. Does this mean as a, a company proprietor or owner that you have to take the initial step based on altruism? You know you're not going to get profit straight away. You know you have to take the first step that you want to somehow satisfy their needs, somehow. That depends on the pro on the project or business you are at. That okay. it could start from the total NGO non-profit basis, or it could not start. Mm -hmm. It depends. There are many examples on both ways. And is this seen as um, a step that's cooperation rather than just pure? exchange of business deals is it seen as because this is a big network isn't it yeah. and as you said you've got decades of building networks so it's not a quick fix is it i mean you you're making a commitment here i think that's what i'm asking yes of course this is a business making a commitment to a, a, an existing and potential market yeah. yeah okay based on real needs well we have real needs around ecological sanitation um, it might be on. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is your market just here in Finland, or global, or parts of the globe, or somewhere here and somewhere there? Tell, well, tell us a little bit about how you fit into this. You've got a new business model by the sound of it. Well, uh, actually, I, I think um, the the name of this uh, discussion actually fits really well with Biolan because mm -hmm. we have an existing business model. It has been there for for almost 40 years now. The business has its ground roots in in uh, organic farming, organic fed fertilizers, and then, then it, it has grown uh, into ecological sanitation, ecological living uh, solutions, and, and, and so on. And the basic uh, market has been of course, in Finland, it's, it's a small or medium-sized Finnish company now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've um, sold um, or the, the whole country full of um, composting toilets to, to f Finnish summer houses. So, so that is the market we know. And the products are made for that market. And in, in many cases, we have been ask to sort of solve the, the big problem of sanitation in, in all parts of the world. And we have been there, looked at the problems, looked at our products, and seen that actually a lot should be done for our products, or uh, some ideas should be generated in order to make it uh, as a business uh, and uh, more or less to find new ways of um, creating the business around the product because uh, as, as Herna said, there has to be the need but also the, the limitation is the money. In, in Finland mm -hmm. we can sell fairly expensive products and people are environmental conscious, they, they spend the money mm -hmm. but if you have really a small amount of money, even if you sort of you have to use a toilet, maybe, maybe not, but that's a basic need. But mm. do you spend money on that? So there has to be um, so a how, service model, more more or less. How do you bring your competences as a Finnish company, and where where do they meet with the competences of a local community, for instance? Do you work with the kind of gatekeepers of that community or the respected persons? You know, where, where do you start joining together these competences? Anybody really, I guess, but since we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, th that, that has actually been the problem. Uh, okay. And, and uh, it has been um, sort of for, for us, 
the economic program has been a, a possibility to go and and spend more time looking into the uh, whole sets of questions locally. With local people. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, because uh, we have known that the current business model of selling the toilets, mm. it, it's not the right one to mm. go there. It has to be something else. So this shifted your thinking from a product to a product system service or even yes. a service. Yeah, yeah. So it changed your perception yeah. of what was possible. Yeah. Okay. And business networking, maybe. And that was enabled yeah. through these yeah. relationships, yeah. wider relationships, great. Um, scaling up, it's always an issue, isn't it? I mean, we talk about innovation. I've just kicked off a European project on eco-innovation and you know, the scaling up question came very quickly. You know, how do you get a good idea and scale it up? Um, how do you see Again, a commercial company helping a society or local communities in scaling up. Maybe you've all got a different level, as Yanni had in his slide, the macro, the meso, the micro. Maybe you, you do it at different levels, but this diffusion of ideas and scaling up, what's your experience? You had, do you want to take it first? Yeah, I could take it first. It's a pity that uh, I wasn't able to be here earlier, so I didn't see the, the mm. uh, presentations before this. this. But um, the scaling up is, uh, is a fundamental element in this Vikonomi program in terms of, of let's, let's say, utilizing World Vision International Network globally. We've been, we are having a presence over 100 countries worldwide. So we believe that uh, if we are able to develop innovative business models together with Finnish companies in, in a certain area, in this pilot phase we are focusing on India and uh, Sri Lanka, uh, two areas in Sri Lanka and one in India. And if we are able to find a business model that works in certain particular area, we believe that there is a great potential for scaling up the similar business uh, together with us, together with this kind of uh, collaboration that we are piloting here. It's not a straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, scaling up must not be taken as a kind of copy and paste. You yeah. need to uh, be prepared for tailoring. Mm -hmm. You need to be prepared for tailoring even, for example, inside India or, or certain kind of a smaller geographic area, but uh, but uh, it is important that there is a possibility to utilize worldwide networks when you, as a company, when you start to plan on, on scaling up and global business. So maybe you have, can you transfer the knowledge from one business community partnership to another part in the world? Can you make that visible? Do you do that as part of what you do? Yeah, we, we do that in terms of development aid activities. Yes, we, we, uh, we take the best practices from one area mm -hmm. which works and, and uh, adapt them to, to another area and, and create them as a processes, etc. So it's a kind of, in, in World Vision, it's a built-in uh, way of working. And I think we can do the same for the, for the business <laughs> wise as well okay. with the companies. You've all had some success, I'm sure, in the different areas you're working, but um, how, do you, uh, how do you know you change something? Maybe you can talk about a project you've done, Anna, or a, a, if you, you have an active, real live project that... Uh, no, this is my current project now, the, my master thesis now, but uh, I have been in small project, mostly in development cooperation field, mm -hmm. and it has been on a small scale that you see the changes happening. For example, I have been building a preschool in Swaziland, so when you see the school building up and you're yourself doing the foundations for the schools, and then you see the kids coming to the school, and then you hear that what has happened in the village after the school has been set up. and. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you use the adjective small because that sounds like a huge well, it's a, change to me. Yeah, Building yeah, a school yeah. is for that locality is. It's not global change. It's not like. Ah, okay, so we like, have to think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a village size. 
mm -hmm. change. Of course, it's huge for the. Do you think that's important? The the visibility of change. For I mean, me the it tangible, is. physical visibility of change. So, that that person over there is using a new toilet, you know, because it looks different. That's a new school. Is the visibility important from your point of view, Mika? Okay. How would you uh, talk about the visibility of change? Well, in o overall, general, the visibility is vital in order to get different organizations, different uh, competencies to get involved. And also, uh, you said that I mentioned, uh, I, I strongly believe that this kind of uh, cooperation, it, it's good to remember that Wiganomi, it's, it's unique, and, and we are halfway of, of, of uh, during this project. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, at, the, at the end, and, and the, uh, uh, when, when we are in that uh, moment that uh, the real visible uh, results can be, can be seen and can be touched, can be felt. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we, 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 we are, we have done something, uh, let's say, y unique. And, and, and uh, something that can be do, do again. And, and then we are in the uh, bridge or edge of, of uh, doing the scalable, uh, sustainable do, model. Do you audit when you go into a new location? Do you say, this is where we are, draw a line in the sand, and then say, okay, we've been here two years, and now this is where we are? Because I get a funny feeling that a lot of people never audit when they go in. They never say, this is what we've got today and therefore they can't actually accurately, quantitatively or qualitatively measure what they actually did. They f kind of feel like they know, but I think sometimes we have to prove. Anybody want to pick up on that? When you go in with a Bioland toilet, how do you know you've added something, extra value somewhere, or with yeah. a project? Uh, from the World Vision point of view, it is, it is Pretty simple in a way that we have a we do have a presence in those areas. We we do work with the communities. We have a certain programs ongoing there. We have done assessments. We know the needs, and and we, we uh, measure the change. And in this economic case, what do you measure? Uh, <laughs> measure the change. <laughs> uh, let's put it. Okay, it differs from the case by case, but mm -hmm. in in simple terms, the key measures are the well-being of children. Okay. Let's say reducing the child mortali mortality after mm -hmm. under the uh, uh, two years old child mortality. So this is tied into Millennium Development Goals. Yeah. And stuff as well. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. And and uh, improving the literacy of of uh, children under eleven age, and uh, reducing malnutrition and, and things like that. Right. And economic development is one of the goals, mm -hmm. also to improve the economic. Uh, situation um, within the communities and develop the, the economical environment in those uh, poor communities. So basically in this economy, if we are able to create more jobs, get people uh, onto the regular work and create income within the community, that we can measure and we can see the change yeah. Yeah. from our perspective. Yeah, Hannah May. Yeah. It's uh, strange that that sort of I should have said all of these things uh, for coming from a company, but but I uh, say a couple of words about the importance of um, non um, tangible uh, changes because I, I think um, uh, for for a company person, it's really important to to go there and see yourself the the situation and and uh, you can't measure the change it makes in your your mind but mm -hmm. but you 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 mm -hmm. are yeah. uh, looking at the world from a different angle and that's the only way to create something new this whole thing of mindset perspective intangible there's an act of faith here somewhere isn't there <laughs> That, but that, that you're doing something that produces uh, benefits. I'll let you think on that whilst we go out to the audience and see 
we're, I'm not sure we've transformed business models yet. We've talked about a kind of operating environment for business models, I think, and a spirit and a culture and a way of doing things. I don't think we've got time this afternoon to get down to how you actually transform a business model, but let's see if there are any thoughts and questions out with our audience there. Yes. Ava, isn't it? Yeah. Well, somehow intangibly, we feel they're doing it to look good rather than doing it sincerely. But, well, we have a response from the audience. Again, the... Or another question was it? I thought you were responding to Eva's question. Let's just take a well, quick... I, I was going to say, in response to her question, Yes. Uh, I think the model has shifted from giving people fish, yeah. to teaching them how to fish, yeah. and exactly. what distinguishes those that are doing it for themselves and those that are doing it for the well-being of the people is that they go beyond teaching them how to fish to teaching them how to fish creatively. <laughs> I love that. Well, it, it chimes in well with a book that's just come out called Radical Openness by Williams and Tapscott who wrote Wikinomics. I've only just glimpsed at the Kindle edition, but what they're saying is that if you've got nothing to hide, you can be completely transparent. You can show how each bit of your business works. Uh, on the basis that other people will come in and suggest how it can be improved and work with you to do that. So that's the fishing creatively bit. Where are we in this? Uh, still selling fish? <laughs> Teach, you know, they're, they're independent fishers or they're fishing creatively? Yeah, I think we, we do have a bit of this creative, uh, creative, <laughs> creative topic fishing. here, here but, uh, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> From the Wikonomy perspective, I can, I can say that this is not a program for the companies who just want to do, or just want to, to look, sell fish. Yeah. look good. <laughs> and, and believe me that we, I have had a discussion with the companies like that. Mm -hmm. And in the initial discussions, when they realized that what is the, the kind of, what is the goal of this program? What is the attitude? What is the commitment? What yeah. is the way of doing uh, cooperation and working together with low-income low communities and, and people over there as an equal partner, uh, it's, it's, you, you, can, you can see when, when, when the yeah. face loop will change and, and, the, and the company says that, okay, this is not probably for me <laughs> then. But luckily we do have a many, many companies who are interested in genuinely about this kind of uh, cooperation, and, and to be to be clear, this is not uh, this is not um, uh, corporate social responsibility act. No. This is building a real business, yeah. but doing that together with the low-income communities and community members, and that's a big difference. But that requires time. That requires mm -hmm. effort. It's not a short-term, short-term shot. Okay. Maybe I could just ask you each to reflect on this transforming existing business models and just give the audience, because we're, we're at time now, just one, one word or a couple of words that sum it up for you. If you're going to transform your existing business model, it's about. So I'll just give you a, a moment to reflect on what that might be. Uh, I would like to summarize that uh, with uh, continuing what Hanamaya said about this, creating the uh, right attitude, uh, for example, for personal and I think also for my, uh, my organization point of view, uh, to understand the true economy, uh, let's say, code or ideology has been mm -hmm. a challenge, but, but uh, only by, by understanding uh, the common interest, uh, we, we can really co-create and, and, and something new. So very much about attitude then, yeah. Anna, what's your kind of, uh, that was about 50 words by the way, but anyway, <laughs> we'll forgive it. Um, Transforming business models. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to put in short, I think start from the real needs, be, be transparent and genuine, that's it. Great, real needs, be transparent and genuine. That could be a slogan for somebody, couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they, they, this is really, really hard, but I'm using 
Yeah, that, that, that could be that. That could be the one. But but. Or that, could share, share, share. <laughs> I would contest. Win, win, win. We share, share, share. <laughs> but uh, I, I think um, for us, it's uh, more going to the the uh, level of the customer to mm -hmm. to work with uh, with a customer and uh, well in, in this case it's co-creation it's it, in its best yeah great thanks okay uh, i think it's uh, uh, important to be to be basically you know simple terms to be open-minded to work with the with the odd partners different partners that you would not perhaps normally think of and uh, try to find a new perspectives through that um, um, genuine cooperation. I say to my students, don't go and work with the usual suspects. Find the unusual suspects. <laughs> They're much more fun. Okay, great. Well, I think we've run out of time on this particular one, but please show your appreciation for the panel here and their round later to our spectrum. So we come to our last panel and